born and raised Manchester then? No. Yes. Oh, I was not. I was born and raised in South East London. Actually. Okay. Yeah, okay. The accent hopefully does still exist. I'm not sure. Get a bit confused these days. It, it does. <laughs> you, you do have the London accent. I do. I love it, you know. I love oh, a Southern I accent. I like yours too. Okay. So. <laughs> Gets me out of a lot of trouble, I think, this accent. It is very soothing. Do you not, do you not ever think, even when you're in Manchester and you don't have a Manchester accent, you're like, I can get away with murder because I'm different. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. And we're like, oh, isn't it nice? Isn't it nice? So what brought you to Manchester? Um, oh gosh, I came up for uni, um, studied international marketing as you do. Wow. Um, and then I ended up in music um, a few years later. Was music always the plan? No, not at all. No, oh no gosh. Way. No, no, no. It was very much something that I did in school and then put to bed. And no then way. Um, I got into my early 20s. I went and did a master's because I was like, what am I going to do with my life? And during the studying, I started to go into like um, open jam nights, open mic nights. And someone just approached me. He's like, do you want to sing in a band? And da, 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 da. And slowly, something that was very much no like a uh, one-off, here we go, I'll do bits and bobs, turned into something that was very regular and turned into my job my whole life. I feel like that never happens. That's so incredible. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's been, yeah. Nice. But hearing your music, I was listening and I was like, this girl has been doing this for a time. Like, she's a professional. <laughs> oh, thank you. It feels like I've been doing it for a while. I think I've been pushing my own, own music for about five, six years. Um, but I've been also singing you know, professionally across loads of different types of styles of music. And yeah. bit about you do like a lot of corporate events and yeah yeah I do I, I work with um, the Untold Orchestra in Manchester so that's cool. very much like a Manchester oh. thing that I'm very proud to be part of but I work with loads of different venues in Manchester as well uh, which last Blues Kitchen um, doing everything from soul funk disco Motown pop cabaret jazz um, cool. so I think that actually helps a lot to influence me as a, as a singer because it stretches you know, my normal kind of capacity. I have to sing sure. songs that I wouldn't sing as a For songwriter sure. and has is, is kind of improved my skills, I think. A hundred percent it does. And, and like your skills in front of an audience as well and having Definitely. to smile doing something, you're like, I hate this. Exactly, <laughs> you know? exactly, you know. Um, it's been a really important part of my journey. But yeah, I am also just Yemi Bolatiwa, a soul singer. Um, so cool. Yeah. So with your original stuff, because you do have a lot of that as well, mm -hmm. when did you get into writing that? Um, so my first kind of piece of work, we well, when we first started the band four or five years ago, those were all songs that I'd written very when I was quite young, when I was in my early 20s. Yeah. And then they finally kind of found a place and um, a new lease of life and I brought them to life with the band. Um, and yeah, they were kind of just very much things of feelings that I felt actually in my coming of age as well. Yeah. So everything was kind of very retrospective. So I was singing, you know, in the last few years I've been singing about stuff that was actually 10 years old and things yeah. that happened to me a long, a long time ago. Sometimes though it does, like you have things sort of like in the, in the pot just waiting to come out or waiting for someone else to put their spin on it and go, mm -hmm. Okay, it's a masterpiece now. Yeah, or just an opportunity, you know. Yeah. I, I also work with DJs and producers, and I love doing electronic music, big like UK garage, drum and bass. That's so cool. All that kind of stuff. So I actually like have repurposed some of those songs into those contexts as well. What's your What's your favorite type of like gig? Is it like going and doing that drum and bass stuff? Is it going and doing the like the sessions or the corporate events? Like, I think. The orchestral stuff sits in the middle. So it can be corporate, but it can also be really, really wholesome and community yeah. kind of focused. I think and anything with an orchestra yeah, is just like, and that's oh, Very wholesome. special, again, never was never in the plan to sing with orchestras so and now cool. I do. That um, is so cool. So yeah, I mean, and live, just anything with a live band, with live music, you know, I can't really compare. It hits different, compare. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, 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 but I like to try and do But it. I feel like the drum and bass stuff would be super fun. It, definitely, definitely. Like, do you have a little drink and get crunk <laughs> and stuff when you do it? Of course, I love a dance. Um, I'll always be out there, with my, you know, gun fingers out and all of that silliness, but. Uh. <laughs> so Manchester is where you're based. Mm -hmm. Is that where you do most of your shows? Yeah, I'd say most of my shows. Um, I've, as In terms of my original music, we've played probably most of like the major cities like north and, and south and 
done, Bur- you know, Birmingham, Leeds, Bristol, Sheffield, Huddersfield. At some point in the last five years, we've managed to play across the whole country, which has been great. That is so incredible. Yeah, um, but I'm currently in a bit of like a crossroads, writing a whole new piece of music, kind of rethinking the sound a little bit. Um, but the electronic stuff that we did today, that's very much something that, that I'll just keep kind of pushing and developing alongside so the lifestyle. So good, stuff. and it's so different. It's it's honestly so cool. Like, I'm a fan. Okay. Low key, okay. like super fun. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Do you miss like London? Is it different? Mm, no, because for me, London is like nostalgic. Um, I you know I moved to Manchester as an adult. I moved here when I was eighteen. Yeah. Um, I moved up north when I was eighteen. Um, so for me, my memories of London are very different to London now. I still go there, obviously, several times a year, and yeah. obviously, I do do shows there as well. Do you sometimes. do shows there? Yeah, I have. Is done. it special? Um, it was really nice. We did something at the National Theatre, which is just on like the Riverbank, South East London, where That's I grew cool. up, like Waterloo like the kind of the heart of London for me and the Thames and I was like that was a very beautiful moment to yeah. think that I'll be coming and doing it's like full circle moment yeah, like exactly, in exactly. your home city mm-hmm. in such an iconic place as well it's you know you can't like pat on the back for that one like no. that's amazing honestly these opportunities that opportunity came through Manchester through my work in Manchester that connected me down there so Manchester's been completely everything really in, in terms of my music journey I hope you feel the same be like your advice to someone wanting to do exactly what you're doing advice I would say say yes to things try things out go out of your comfort zone I know it's a really cliche thing to say um when you're beginning I think you try everything and don't be I think there can be a bit of pride around like oh you're meant to just be like out on the scene and you're just going to be smashing it and that's it no you might sing to no one for for loads of gigs you might have some of the worst gigs of your life you have to have those experiences first in order to get good until you've done that exactly so I think it's really important to say yes to things and try new things out doesn't not every opportunity is going to be a mind blowing one but you never know when the next one is such good advice you're such a clever (laughs) girl Oh, where have you been all my life girl where have you been? I'm here now. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> so when it comes to like things that are coming up and stuff, you were saying that you're writing the album. Mm-hmm. Is that like in the process of being recorded? And Actually, it's uh, so I went I went traveling the first half of this year. I was in like South America and Central America, living the dream. I'm literally so downtime. jealous of your life. Can you stop <laughs> it's, it? I, mean, I think I'm selling you the best bits. <laughs> no. But um I spent like four months out there just taking some time to write some new stories and write and reflect on the last few years, the more recent years of my life. Um, and I came back and written about six or seven songs and me and the band have already done one session sitting together and I'm like, okay, so this is what I'm writing. Blah, 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 blah. And they'll be like, okay. And then I'm about to start making some chords. It's very like collaborative did, process. Yeah, do they help as a yeah, very yeah, like yeah. a... And I don't use an instrument apart from my vocals. So like I need it's them. It's a big instrument I need them though, for it to, you make, know? For it to work. Um, but it's, I love it. It's the, it's the best part of it for me. And like, yeah, we're just looking for like ways and means of, of promoting the new sound um creating a new album it might take a year or two to get there to be honest with yeah. the start of it um and do as many live gigs and stuff and, until we get the chance to record it and, and the funding yeah. to record it but you know oh, it's i'm out there doing my prsf it? and help musicians grants we'll get there we will you find absolutely one. will <laughs> to be honest it sounds like you're smashing it already <laughs> and i think as well we have this like sort of concept in our head that because TikTok and social media and the, the internet and stuff like people do blow up overnight and we mm-hmm. forget like the artists that we grew up like loving and mm-hmm. the ones that are still here making albums they didn't have an overnight success they didn't mm-hmm. pump out albums every six months you know exactly. they were working on things for a few years and making sure like it's good enough to go out to my fans so you're doing the right thing I think I'm very old school like that I am a bit yeah. old school I'm just like I don't want to just suddenly quickly turn into an overnight success don't get me wrong this isn't overnight I'll be taking the success now <laughs> yeah. I'll take it but I'm, I'm also very I, I love process I love organic yeah. creativity and I love things coming to people in an organic way absolutely um, so I love it when I, when I meet people just incrementally and just slowly build around something Absolutely. I think the things that you go through on your journey as well to get to where you are build you to be that person to where yeah. you need to be. So it's all it's all relevant. And it doesn't ever end, does it? You know, music's oh, forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? So <laughs> like we were talking before, so what's your favorite song to sing? Oh, no! <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, no, never, no. never, 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 <laughs> never. But what is your favorite song that you've written? Oh, that I've written. 
Oh, interesting. Okay. I do love the Love La. So um, that is the name of the EP that we recorded at the end of last year um, that we did with String um, Quartet as well. So it was a big piece of work that we Lots put together. Um, and yeah, I really love that song. And but um, Why? Because I think it was the, it's like the most romantic song I've ever written. Oh, um, love a girl. Bit, <laughs> it is. It's very open. It's very open about... Um, just like feeling love and feeling worried, but you're falling and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, you've got to listen to the tune. Um, so will. I do love that song, but because we've recorded it now and we've played it to death, I'm like, Look, you're like, I hear this song. I never want to hear it again uh, in my life. <laughs> but um, I, I, really, I do like One Night as well, which is one of the ones that we recorded today. Who knows how this will go and I'm about to put my heart on the table. Parks back to that R and B version of me. Yeah, it's a little bit Destiny's Child. It's a little bit Ooh. something else. So yeah, a bit um, of me, I love that. There you go. I gave you two answers, but you've, you've given me plenty. <laughs> honestly, thank okay. you so much for chatting to me. Oh no, thank you. This has you. been one of the loveliest chats I've had it on this show. So it really has been nice. Thank you so much for singing for us as well. It was a pleasure. Aww. I was just getting ready, curling my hair, listening to your tunes. Oh, great. It was yeah, incredible. It's great. Okay. It's all going great. <laughs> for for uh, brushing it with a fork, guys. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> But Yemi, thank you so much for being here today. No, thank you very much for having me.